You're pregnant with triplets. My parents had been waiting for this moment for their entire lives. They were ecstatic. Their doctors followed with the following sentence. The little one likely won't survive. For the next couple of weeks, all the parents heard were just numbers upon numbers upon numbers. 47% chance of stillbirth. 33% chance of preterm labor. And a 64% chance of some or all of the babies being born with defects. The doctors made it clear that this decision was for the parents, but reduction was the safest path forward for everyone involved. They also made it very clear that that reduction should be the little one. I was that little one. You know, I heard this story several times over the past couple of years, and each time I'm struck with a sense of gratitude, but also a lingering question. Yeah, I'm here today, but who am I? That's how I want to start this talk today. I want each of you guys to pause for five seconds and answer that question. Who are you? What makes you, you? All right, time's up. Wasn't too easy, right? Couldn't figure out who you were? It's a hard question. Who we are? What makes us, us? According to Erickson's psychological development model, as college students, we are currently in the stage known as identity versus confusion. I don't like that name. For me, I like to call it confusion. <laughs> That's it. There is no idea where I am right now. Hell, oh, I've only been here for two years, and I've already switched my major five times. So <laughs> we're learning. It's a process. But it's a question that all of us as college students ask us every day. So what do we do? Well, we turn to what's easiest, defining ourselves in one major way. You know, looking back at the situation between my birth, yeah, the doctors were right about some of the predictions. I was born with a number of defects, the chief among them being spina bifida and a hearing loss. I've had 13 surgeries in my life. I have scars going down my back. I take a daily medication to help with digestion. And evidently, I'm still a little guy. For a long part of my life, I thought that those parts were the only part of me that mattered. Nothing else. It was just a lingering thought, not too bad, until my sophomore year of high school. I was at my intramural basketball game. And let me tell you, when I play intramural sports, I am locked in, all right? I play to win, all right? So I'm running onto the court. I'm all excited. Got my headband on. Got my Superman socks on. I'm locked in. In my mind, I'm looking at my opponents, and I'm thinking, who's my victim, all right? <laughs> Who am I going to score my career high on tonight? Two points. <laughs> and I lock eyes with my opponent, the guy that's going to guard me. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, you're mine. And he looks at me, turns to his opponent, and goes, hey, yo, I got the disabled kid. You know, I don't really remember how many points I scored that game. Couldn't tell you what the final score of that game was. But I could tell you how I felt. It sucked. It hurt. At that point, my fears were true. I was the messed up kid. The kid that was different because of his health issues the kid that was nothing else other than his medical issues. And that sucked. So, what did I do? Well, I hid. I didn't talk to anybody about what was going on. Didn't talk to my friends. Didn't talk to my family. I just sat to myself, letting those thoughts linger. And every day, I hated it more and more. 
to one day my senior year. I was at a senior year retreat, and I met these guys in my group three days ago. And we were tasked with telling a life story. Like I said, I met these guys three days ago. Barely knew them. So I was like, let's light this candle. Let's see what's going to happen. So that's exactly what I did. I told them everything. Told them about my fears that I was having. Told them about my medical history that I've had. Told them about the thoughts that I hated so much. And let me tell you, it was awesome. Like, I had a weight lifted off of my shoulder, but that wasn't even the best part. The best part was when I was leaving that retreat, and a kid in my group ran up to me, and he told me something that changed the way I thought about myself forever. Yes, yeah, Sam, you got health issues. Can't deny that. You got differences. But that's not who you are. It's just a part of who you are. My mind shifted in that moment. They had accepted me. They saw the differences, can't deny that. But you know what else they saw? They saw an obnoxious theater kid. They saw an angry Eagles fan. They saw a shorty. But you know what? That's perfect. They saw me. And that's all I could have asked for. So I was ready to open up to people. The first was my best friend. For so long, I was terrified that by opening up to him, it would push him away. But that's not what happened. It brought us closer. Because that's what happens with your friends. If you accept yourself, why would they not accept you? So I'm going to ask that question to myself again. Who am I? Well, my name's Sam Perry. I'm five feet tall, 99 pounds of pure steel, all right? <laughs> I'm a coxswain on the men's rowing team at UNC. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm a UNC tour guide. And let me tell you, I'm really good at basketball, all right? <laughs> and I have spina bifida. I have a hearing loss. I've had 13 surgeries. I face challenges in my life, but that's just one part of who I am. And in fact, some of my best qualities come from that part. For a tiny guy, I'm kind of tough. If you push me, I'm going to attempt my hardest to push you back. You may not move, but I will try and push you. <laughs> my best qualities come from my health issues. And yeah, it's a process. I don't know myself completely, but I've learned to embrace my truth. That's the theme of this conference, truth or dare. I hate that game, all right? Because if I choose dare, I either have to eat something gross, do something gross, or go streaking. And I don't really want to do that. But if I choose truth, they're going to ask me about my health issues. For so long, I didn't want to talk about that. But over the past year, I've learned you should always choose truth. Yeah, it may be the boring choice, but in my mind, it's the best choice that you can make. By choosing truth every time, you're embracing yourself. And I know that's hard. I know all we want to do is just put on a show of what people want us to be. But let me fill you in on a secret. We're messed up, all right? You're messed up. You over there? Yeah, you're messed up. Back there, yeah? Messed up, all right? <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> we're all messed up. So why are we scared to be messed up? If everybody's messed up, what's wrong with that? So I'm going to finish my talk with that same question I asked earlier. But this time, you have your whole life to answer it. Who are you? <laughs>